Latin America benefit from a commodity boom in the last decade, when the region said goodbye to years of high inflation and hello to a consumer middle class, 2015 presents a more concerning scenario. The IMF says Latin America and the Caribbean is likely to grow 1.3% in 2015, down from a 2.2% forecast in October. The fund cites external factors contributing to the region's slowdown. At the end of 2014, the um, European Union numbers were weaker than expected. Japan was weaker than expected. And also uh, on China, I mean, the rebalancing has progressed a little bit faster than we had anticipated before. And investment has been coming down a, a little bit faster than we uh, thought in our October projections. And transferring that into 2015, basically a lot of those factors, and on top of them, uh, when you look at the emerging world, mm -hmm. uh, a significant revision of medium-term growth potential is also taking place. Another issue, falling oil prices, meaning economic challenges for major exporters such as Venezuela. It's definitely a big problem. Venezuela is selling oil now at less than $40 a barrel. One year ago it was selling oil at $100 a barrel. So you know, this is a cut of 60% in its revenues because Venezuela essentially sells primarily if not uh, only oil. The future of the Venezuelan economy is going to depend on how well it does this adjustment and uh, what happens to oil prices in the future and whether current prices are prices that are going to persist uh, or whether there's going to be a recovery over time. While some countries, such as those in Central America, can benefit from plunging prices, the price drop presents challenges for oil producers seeking to get projects off the ground. There are countries that today are not oil exporters mm -hmm. or were marginal export, net exporters, such as Mexico, mm -hmm. that in the medium term were expecting to become significant net exporters and they had important energy projects going on. Right. And basically, I mean, if we look at Mexico with its energy reform, Brazil with the pre-salt, uh, the development of the pre-salt, and Argentina with Vaca Muerta, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of those uh, initiatives will still move ahead, but they will move ahead, we think, at a, a slower pace than was expected, and therefore the effect on Latin America in the medium run might be slightly higher than what we are estimated in the short run. Experts discussing Mexico's economic outlook agree that GDP growth expected from energy investments may take a hit. When the government launched uh, the so-called Ronda Uno, Round One for Energy Reform, the, the portfolio of projects that the government announced was expected to yield about $13 billion of FDI inflows per year over the next five years. I'm sorry, $13 billion per year. Now, with oil prices being 50% lower, with some of these uh, projects no longer being viable, shale oil, right. deep water may not be that attractive, uh, I think that we have to cut that 13 billion amount by, by a significant uh, percentage. I don't know if it's 50%, I don't know if it's uh, 40%. So what factors could affect Latin American economies going forward? You want to look at how commodities prices are evolving. You want to look at the price of oil, you want to look at the price of gold, you want to look at the price of copper, you want to look at the price of iron ore, because the region is primarily an exporter of these goods. You want to look at how the rest of the world, uh, the, part, the countries that buy things from Latin America, and that is the U.S., it's Europe, but it's also, to a great extent, China, which is creating a lot of the demand for these natural resources. Uh, if China is growing, if China and India continue to grow, that means good perspectives for Latin America. If they stall, then Latin America starts having difficulties. For ASCOA Online, this is Luisa Lemi. For more news on Latin America, visit as-coa.org.